Hi, I'm Rebecca Valcarcel with Writers on Writing. We're talking today with Ernesto Cisneros, author and educator. Because you mentioned your work is character driven, would you mind talking about how you create a character that who's who's rich and and who has you know yes. somewhere to grow? So usually I um and I Oh my God, another really difficult question. So this is where the, <laughs> this is the part that takes me longer than actually writing the books. It's figuring out the characters. So the way that I look at writing is that I'm gonna, you're get somebody's paying me to play with dolls, action fig <laughs> or action figures, whatever you wanna call them. Yeah. Uh, but when I was a kid, I played with my sisters. I'm excited to go see the Barbie movie because we used to play, I used to like my, my Luke Skywalker and my, uh, um, my Robin action figure would kidnap Barbie from her uh, mobile home <laughs> and we'd have all sorts of adventures. And I, you know, anyways, uh, but that's, that's pretty awesome. much what I do now. The only difference now is that nobody's giving me a set of action figures or toys to play with. And so for me, it's going out and experiencing life, uh, going to, you know, taking my kids somewhere, going to the park, just kind of always watching. Mm -hmm. And then I always find somebody who's kind of inspires something. And I might borrow somebody's hair, somebody's mm -hmm. glasses, a quirk that they have, something interesting. And it just kind of sticks with me. I'm like, that would make a great quirk. And so then I borrow, I see somebody else, uh, a kid walking with his shoe, that never ties his shoelaces. And I'm like, oh, that's very telling of that character. You know what? I'm going to put that, give that attribute to my character. And so I start coming up with these traits and before I know it I have my, my action figure my doll ready to go and once I've got them ready to go I'm ready to write the story and I just create a scenario a situation and I put my plop my characters right there and then it's just a matter of yeah you just play and play oh. that's all you're doing writing is just playing with dolls except the dolls are, are up here yeah and do you think about a a backstory for the characters like what happened before they got to that scenario that you dropped them in um do you, how much history do you create for them or or kind of a, i don't know psychological baggage <laughs> that they bring or everything everything okay um i the thing is that I, I i don't want my characters reacting the way i want them to for the sake of a story i want uh -huh. them to act the way that they're going to act and so there's no real thinking in my part as far as just like, what is this person going to do? It's no, what would this person do? Um, and so that's, they that's but that's they why. Behave I, yeah, as so, they are as people. Yeah. So I have this running ex, uh, assignment and I'll forward it over to you. I call it the mirror exercise. And it's a mirror uh, on a paper and it's a little hand mirror. And then it has like six questions around it, like, um, how do you see yourself? How do, does everybody else see you? What's the side of you that you hide? And then once they do that, and I never read them, these are private ones that the kids do just so they can kind of dig deep. And then we flip the side, the paper over, and it says, how does your character see themselves? What side do they not share? What do, what is, what do they like least about themselves? And there's six questions on there. And that I always do this exercise because uh, with my characters, because one, I kind of see the connection I have with the character and we have similarities. And I know some students have told me, can they be exactly the same? And that's the beauty about writing is that they could put their most secret things and write about them, whatever's going on in their lives. But the second that we flip the paper and we see your character, we're assuming this is all fictitious. And so nobody knows what's real and what's not unless you tell people otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it can be very therapeutic. It can really help you to relax. It gets you to connect with your characters. Um, but I, I know whether my, what, like, what's the grossest thing somebody will eat or put on their food? <laughs> um, I always have to have questions like that. I want to know, like, you know, what's their, what are they most insecure about? And, and little things like that. I just, I have to have a full character uh, fleshed out before I can start writing. That's why it takes so long. Before and that's write. why it takes me so long to write books. Yes. <laughs> I'm definitely going to use that exercise for, for my own work and, and also with students. That sounds, that sounds great. Yeah. And, and then, um, and I have another worksheet that I've used. Um, and it's essentially like how to get to know a character pretty well. 
and uh, I'll, I'll put myself on the spot here, but uh, one of them is obviously like the appearance, uh, how they speak, um, you know, what they say, what they don't say. Another one is people's reactions to people. Um, if you walked into a group, into a room, you know, like let's say you and I, you, we, we go to a conference uh, as we do, and I run into you yes. as I have, and um, and imagine that when you walk in, um, okay, let's change it over to let's change, change the situation. So we're all there together, and let's just say Meg Medina, uh, the Newbery Award-winning author, Ooh. comes over. Okay, well we we both know what the reaction is going to be in the room when she walks into the room. Everybody's going to be all hugs and cheering, and everybody's going to take a moment. But it, as a writer, imagine that same scenario where we have the same character, and the only thing that changes is the reaction. So Meg Medina walks into the room, and everybody rolls her eyes and sighs, and they're like, "Oh God," you know. And she makes a joke, and nobody laughs, or or they fake. So it could be the same situation, which of course is not the case because everybody loves Meg Medina. I just want to clarify, uh, she's wonderful. Yes. But it's sometimes you could just change a character by the way other people perceive them. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and I do also focus on v visually. I try and focus on one thing that's. And I ask people if somebody, if this person walked into the room right now and stole your glasses, and you had to report them, like somebody's like they're outside. What's that first thing that just get gets gets you about them? And that's usually because I don't like to over describe. Mm -hmm. Um. I have really severe ADD and I don't like books that have, I don't like those 500 page books that have 15 pages of description that I, uh, I really don't need. I don't really care about, Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's in the future. Okay. I, that's enough. Thank you. I get it. Um, I, I, that's all I need. I have an imagination too. Um, yeah, and, and the so reader that's, mm -hmm. creates the, the the movie of the story, really. So you don't have to provide a a very long detailed description, and, because the reader is doing that work. Yeah, yeah, and and we're doing and we're going to build the world that we want to see. When I remember reading The Giver, I had a completely completely different image from what the movie was. Uh, I mean, that was the worst movie I think I've ever seen. <laughs> and I waited like 15 years for that adaptation too. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah. but again, somebody else read it and they had a completely different, and I found that really just fascinating. I'm like, oh, wow, this is how somebody interpreted this world. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things I loved about that book was that there wasn't, she never overwrote. It was mm -hmm. just what, what you need at that moment is all you were given. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of your, your craft and your process with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. I mean, this is really nice because, uh, you know, you also got me thinking of something that I just kind of do now and I don't think about it. So it's nice to sit down and reflect like, uh -huh. okay, you know what? And if I'm struggling, it's a good reminder to myself too. It's like, oh, well, you did this with the other books. Why aren't you doing it now? You can um, do it. <laughs> You can do it again. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm, I'm actually. I don't want to say I'm stuck, but I'm, I'm at a crossroad with my characters. Hmm. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm probably gonna like to think about everything we talked about here today. Even yeah. as an author, we need to be reminded as well. You know. Yeah, yeah, we really do. It helps to just say it out loud and actually consciously know this is how how we do it. <laughs>